Good, after good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I hate to interrupt your conversation, but I just want to let you know we're going to be starting in about five or ten minutes. So while you have food at your table, please eat, please drink, and we're going to be starting our program. People are just waiting for that announcement where you can do that. So go ahead and do that. Enjoy, and we'll start the program in about ten minutes. All right? Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I would like to welcome you to Tea and Trumpets, where each year we take time to celebrate both our scholars and our donors. For those who I haven't met yet, my name is Pat Regan. I'm the new Executive Director of Philanthropy and the EOU Foundation. I just started a few weeks ago, and I could not be more excited to be here, to be moving to this community and being part of this wonderful university. It is my privilege to be your host for this afternoon's festivities. As many of you know from past experience, this event is designed to connect our students and the people who support their education through generous philanthropy. Today, you'll hear from several of our students about the impact these scholarships make in their lives. The EOU Foundation has been holding this event annually for more than 15 years as a way to simply say thank you and perhaps just as importantly, for conversations to take place where we explore why we do what we do, as well as to inspire students to continue to reach for their dreams and for donors to continue to support this fantastic institution. To start things off this afternoon, I would like to invite our university president and alumnus, Tom Insko, to say a few words. President Insko. A few words. <laughs> Why are you guys laughing? <laughs> Thanks, Pat. And uh, I just want to take this opportunity to wel welcome Pat uh, to the EOU team. Looking forward to the, the uh, leadership you're going to bring to the foundation and uh, the impact that's going to have on the broader EOU community as well. We're, we're really adding a lot of great members to the EOU team that I'm excited about that are are really going to help us move forward at this university. I want to thank, I don't know why I bring notes up here because then I just disregard them, but uh, <laughs> I want to thank all of you for taking time out of your busy days, both the students and all of you donors. Uh, we're all very busy people, uh, and often what we don't do is take the time to step back and acknowledge some of the things that we're thankful for, that we ought to be thankful for, uh, we move in a fast-paced society and, and don't take that time. And today is, is an opportunity to do that. Emily and I both really enjoy uh, this event uh, because it does give us the opportunity and the donors the opportunity to connect with the students and hear about directly how we're having an influence on someone's life. Together it's possible. 
So uh, when I was making the transition as into the presidency here at EOU, I was contemplating what culture, what context as an individual and as a team do I want to create at EOU? And I grappled with that quite a bit. Um, but what I finally settled on was together it's possible. And for me, as I looked back on my history, my experiences and such, what, I kept, what kept resonating with me as I thought about um, what I aspire for every day and what I aspire for this university is that most of what I accomplished, arguably everything I accomplished, I was part of someone or something else. I was part of being together with others, contributing. And the other thing that I've experienced, both uh, through being part of a team or me individually, is possibilities that when I first started, uh, I never considered even within the realm of possibility. So together, it's possible. We have lots of organizations here on campus that really support, our students support this institution. We have the EOU Foundation with our new president, uh, Dr. Nearing. Um, we have our Mountaineer Athletic Association. We have the Oregon Ag Foundation. We have the Alumni Association. We have all these different groups that have come together with us um, to create new possibilities for Eastern and students. But today, we're celebrating more, our focus is more on access. So today, it's about scholarship donors, and it's about the recipients. I don't think it's a surprise, a surprise for any of us that EOU prides itself on being a university of access and opportunity. Let me start with the statistics. I like numbers. If you don't believe we're, we're an access and opportunity institution, just in the state of Oregon, if you look across the seven public universities, EOU's proportion of high-need students is 1.6 times that of the average of the other six universities. 1.6 times of our students have uh, come in as low income. Eastern, if it wasn't here, um, would, if Eastern wasn't here, the access to higher education for many of those students would be gone. And if you weren't here as donors, providing your support for many of these students, access to higher education would be gone. But I always say we're an institution of access and opportunity because the other component of that is when we provide access to EOU, it's unrivaled opportunity that we're giving our students. And I can use statistics here, too. The Economist did a study of all the institutions across the nation, and they identified what institution, each institution, what's the difference between when the student comes in and where they end up when they graduate with a bachelor's degree. Eastern Oregon University was the number one public institution in the state of Oregon, and the number three institution of all public and private in the whole Pacific Northwest. And for me, from kind of that statistical standpoint, when I think about making an investment in something, I'm looking at the return on investment, and there is hardly any better return on investment than what EOU does once we provide that access for students, and I'm proud of that. But I'm gonna shift, because today isn't about statistics. Today is about personal stories. And I'm here today as president of the university, but I'm also here as a donor and recipient of foundation scholarship funds. Many of you know my story, being an alum at EOU. But I just want to briefly touch on why Together It's Possible is such a personal story for me. When I came in, I had aspirations of what I wanted to be as an individual. I had a lot going for me. I've supported uh, parents and such, but not a lot of money. And due to contributions by people that didn't even know me, 
and to this day don't know me, I was provided access to something at EOU that I'm extremely proud of. Because when I came in, relative to when I left, I was transformed as an individual. Not just because I got to live out the dreams I already knew I wanted to live out, but things that I never thought were possible manifested themselves to me during my time at Eastern. And I was able to graduate debt-free, which then positioned me to do something that I wouldn't have had been able to do otherwise, and that was move on to graduate school right from then and, and go to the school that I wanted to that was a little more expensive. <laughs> but at the end of the day, I stand before you now today as an individual that's living a fulfilling life, and I'm in a successful career, which is what our students aspire for, and I know we as donors uh, hope for, for the students that we impact. And so, together, it's possible. Today, you as donors are providing the access, the financial means for these students. Now we get to hear just a few of the stories about what they're finding as possibilities in their lives because of what you contribute to them by providing that access. I'm proud of what we do here at EOU, but I'm more proud of our students and what they do and their ability to do that because of donors like you. So thank you. Thank you to those donors that had an impact on my life and thank you to all of you for what you contribute to EOU and most importantly to our students. With that, I'll turn it over to the people you really want to hear from after Pat are the students. Thank you. Thanks, Scott. Remind me never to follow him again. All right. Tom mentioned uh, our EOU Foundation, and I'm going to ask uh, our Foundation President, Dr. Patrick Nearing, to step up to the podium for a welcome on behalf of the Foundation. Yeah, I always hate to follow Tom, too, so at least I had to get to follow Pat, so that's not too bad. Uh, first of all, I, I want to thank everyone for joining us today. I know that uh, many of you traveled from around the region to be here, and, and we really appreciate your efforts uh, to get here this afternoon. This is one of the highlight events of the year for Eastern Oregon, and it truly affirms my dedication to volunteering with the Eastern Oregon University, University Foundation. Over the last couple years, I've had the pleasure of being on the foundation board and have seen firsthand the foundation, what it has made on the lives of the students and the programs they've been able to support. I'm sure you will agree, after hearing the stories from the students a little later in this program, that the work of the foundation is truly irreplaceable and an integral part of the success of Eastern Oregon University. The funds housed in the foundation, which many of you in this room have contributed to, directly impact our students and help increase the recruitment and retention of our students, which are the lifeblood to the university. One of my goals as president of the foundation is to see that any student who wants to attend Eastern Oregon University shall not have to drop out for financial reasons. As the state contributes continues to decrease the funding for higher education, it becomes even more important that the foundation not only exists, but thrives. I truly believe in paying it forward, and for that reason, I have remained actively engaged in my alma mater, both on volunteering on my time and giving back financially. I encourage you to join me and to contribute to support the Eastern Oregon Foundation and the next generation of Mountaineers. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Nearing. The foundation currently stewards approximately $15 million in assets earmarked for student and university support and awards more than $600,000 in scholarships each year. As Pat mentioned with the state uh, cut to funding, uh, the private scholarships and private support becomes all the more critical. 
For all of our students here today, I want to thank you for joining us. I know you have classes. I know you have other things that you could be doing, but, uh, but all of us appreciate you taking the time out of your day to be here. It's very important that you're here, and we want to make sure we say thank you. I also hope that you will consider giving back to your alma mater and support, support those who follow in your footsteps at Eastern. Even the smallest start at just $10 a month can make a massive difference to a student. Please consider continuing this great tradition by paying it forward for the next generation of talented students so that they too may benefit from all that you have received. So, it is now my pleasure to welcome up the first of our speakers. Up first is Eleanor Stewart, recipient of the Joy Veach Dobbins Scholarship, the Sapphire Scholarship, and the Cholet Scholarship. Please welcome Eleanor Stewart. So this is the biggest crowd I've ever spoken in front of. So <laughs> I'm kind of scared. <laughs> but hi, I'm Eleanor Stewart. I'm 20 years old and I live on campus. I was raised in Pendleton, Oregon and I am dual majoring in elementary education and multidisciplinary studies with a concentration in English for speakers of other languages and a minor in Spanish. <laughs> so I'm a go-getter. <laughs> um, Throughout my life, I never really thought about going to college up until maybe the beginning of my junior year of high school. And so by the time I decided I wanted to go to college, it was a very last minute decision for me and my family. I, alongside with my brother, my younger brother, um, was raised by my grandparents who did not anticipate me coming to EOU or any university because um, no one in our family ever has. So I am a first, college, a first generation college student. So I was very unprepared for this huge step in my life. I actually remember the first time I received the EOU Foundation scholarship in my first EOU Foundation scholarship in the mail. And I remember how incredibly happy I was to see it. Um, my grandmother, my mom, and I all cried at <laughs> how joyous we were to see that somebody had helped us and helped me be able to get this education that I'm absolutely loving. <laughs> um, and after that one, there was a couple others that came in and I felt more and more relieved and more joyous every single time I s got one. And before I knew it, my entire first year of college was paid for, plus some extra. Um, I actually ended up using that extra amount of money to study abroad in Spain last summer, um, which was a life-changing experience. Not only because throughout my entire life, my family and I wanted to go to Spain because of our heritage, but also because it helped me grow as a person and experience a lot of new things. Um, I improved my Spanish-speaking ability there, which was my goal. But I also gained a lot more confidence than I would have ever had. Um, and I probably would have never been standing up here talking in front of all of you guys if it wasn't for that experience. So I would like to say thank you to all of you. Your support has literally changed my life. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Eleanor, and I also I also learned a little something from sitting at the table. She's also quite the costume maker, so you're gonna have to ask her about some of the costumes that she's made after the reception. Now I would like to welcome Coral Goldstein, recipient of the Forrest Fletcher Memorial Scholarship, the Business College Scholarship, the Hargett Scholarship, and the Maybell Clark McDonald Scholarship to please come up. My name is Coral Goldstein and I'm 18 years old. I grew up in Union County and I attended school in Imbler. I haven't declared my major yet, but I'm looking into majoring in psychology and minoring in Spanish. I was given the most amazing parents. They were my grandparents, but they adopted me when I was two years old, and to me they were always mom and dad. From a young age, they taught me to dream big and always stay true to myself. I always knew that no matter what goals I created, I would have their full support. 
When I said I wanted to attend college, I knew I had their full support, but I knew they wouldn't be able to support me financially. My dad was the sole provider for our family, and when, we, when he lost his job, we were no longer financially secure. In 2010, he was diagnosed with the beginning stages of dementia, and my mom and I took care of him up until we moved him into a nursing home. It was difficult to watch him change over the years. He had always been the one to take care of me, and this time it was my turn to help take care of him. He was my everything, so when I lost him the summer of 2016, I was devastated. It was difficult starting my senior year of high school knowing that my dad would not get to see me graduate, but I knew he was still with me in my heart. I also knew he would want me to keep chasing after my dreams, so I applied to EOU. From the times I had been on campus, I knew I loved the atmosphere and that it was the right fit for me. I knew that becoming an Eastern student would allow me to be successful and around people who want to see me succeed. I remember I was so proud when I found out that I was accepted. When I also found out that I was the recipient of several EOU Foundation scholarships, I was so overcome with joy. I remember opening the letters and looking over at my mom and saying, you won't believe this, someone else believes in me too. Your generosity is what is making my dream of attending college a reality. Words cannot express how grateful and appreciative I am for being given this opportunity. I hope to one day be able to have the same impact on someone's life that you have had on mine. Thank you. Thank you, Coral. Wow. <laughs> We're only halfway through and I'm already getting out of my checkbook to write another check. <clears throat> Next, I would like to introduce EOU Governing Board Trustee and EOU Foundation donor, Dr. Brad Stevens. Brad is one of Eastern's biggest supporters, and yet technically he didn't attend EOU. He lives here a lot, it feels like. Some of you might find this surprising, but it is actually very common for individuals to adopt EOU as their own and be some of our greatest champions for the university. Brad attended Harvard University, Tufts University School of Medicine, and Dartmouth Medical School all en route to becoming an orthopedic surgeon. Brad established his orthopedic surgery practice in Le Grand in 1979 and was the team physician for EOU, helping teach courses on athletic injuries. In 1993, he was named medical director of the United States Olympic Training Center in Lake Placid, New York. He returned to Eastern in 2007 and settled in Wallowa County where he practices until 2014. He has served as the secretary to the EOU Foundation Board of Directors for the past two years and is the chair of the Wallawa Resources, a nonprofit dedicated to sustaining the working landscape in Wallawa County. Please welcome Dr. Brad Stevens. Wow, wow, that's uh, great to be there. I didn't know I did all that, but. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, I, my association to Eastern really goes back a long time to 1975, and I thought, boy, I wouldn't see anybody here, but I'm seeing a lot of friendly old faces here, so that's kind of nice. Uh, you know, I did come and started practicing orthopedic surgeon, uh, surgery and got involved with Eastern right off the bat, being the team physician and taking care of uh, students here, and uh, really got to, uh, to like the students and get to ad admire what the students went through. Um, you know, when you're an orthopedic surgeon, you are taking care of injuries, but usually things get better, but sometimes it takes a while. And if you're an athlete in the middle of a season or you're a student trying to get through classes and work and get things done, it can be really devastating to have a bad injury. So I really think I got to know the students on a much deeper level than, than you might otherwise. And so I really got to admire them and, and respect these students for how hard working they are. And I thought I might tell you a little story about a hardworking student that uh, you won't believe. But back uh, in those days, in the 80s, there was a football player, tight end, he was pretty, pretty good, and he hurt his ankle. But he wouldn't let the trainer uh, take him to, for me to see, so I never got to see him. But he kind of played okay, he gimped around a lot, but he was a tight end and he was able to get by with it. So at the end of the season, they brought, the, brought him in for me to see him. And you know, this big swollen red ankle, and I took an x-ray. Uh, and he had a fracture of his fibula, which, uh, uh, excuse me, which is a small bone in the ankle. And so he played through his season with a broken ankle. He worked at Safeway. He uh, went to class, and uh, uh, he was determined, and he was a hard worker. And that's an Eastern student. That's what I, I respect. And I also respect the fact, and I hear this from these students, it's so in, in invigorating that you really do have a need. There's a definite financial need for our students here. 
and I think it's so meaningful that we can give them scholarships. And I know a lot of you students are probably first generation students, and also I think the support for that is good. Uh, you know, back then I really got to know Eastern pretty well. Uh, back then it was EOSC, if any of you remember, that Eastern Oregon State College. Uh, I got to be really good friends with a number of the faculty. Uh, you, uh, some of you nice old friends will remember Chuck Code and, and John Millay and Bob Brandon. All these guys were good friends. They all had kids our age. Um, and so we all got to know each other. And one of, the, one of the fun things I used to do was I used to go for a run with these guys at noontime, get out of the field house and go for a run. And I got to learn a fair amount about Eastern because I was a little slower than them. So my trick was I'd get to talk to them and raise a subject that was really controversial. And then they'd get <laughs> arguing back and forth. And uh, they'd slow down so I could stay up with them. So <laughs> that was the day of Rodney Briggs. So you can imagine there were some conversations we had uh, uh, on those runs, but that was a lot of fun. But I really did do, get to respect the faculty because they were so devoted to teaching students. That's what they did, as they taught students. And the, the lucky thing here is, as you students know, we have a very low student to faculty ratio, and the faculty really gets to know the students well. Uh, they get experiential learning, uh, and I think that's, that's the, I think the leading thing for Easton is our faculty and the student-faculty relationship. <laughs> Um, I did have a little hiatus going back to Lake, Lake Placid and then came back uh, in uh, 2007 and um, we, Ann and I really wanted to move back to Eastern Oregon and we settled in Joseph uh, where I had a chance to work part-time uh, for about five years. But when I came back, I really wanted to get re-involved with Eastern and so I was able to join the foundation, uh, <coughs> which as you can hear is a wonderful organization devoted to scholarship for students, and Ann and I have been working on supporting a scholarship for students, and we feel very, very good about that. Um, so uh, I just want to uh, say that I really got to learn a whole lot more about Eastern uh, now that I've recently been asked to be on the Board of Trustees, and I find that a really rewarding and meaningful thing. I'm very proud of that. Uh, and I'm getting to learn a whole lot more about the workings of Eastern, and I'm very impressed. And Certainly the most important thing I think we have recently is we now have Tom Insko as our president. And his passion, his drive, his goals that he has set out, his qualities for the university are fantastic. And it makes it a very special place. And also there's just a lot going on here now. We have new deans. We've got a new alignment of colleges. We've got goals for raising enrollment. So it's really a fun place to be. So it, uh, I really enjoy being involved here. And the final thing I was going to say is uh, <clears throat> this is a – tea and trumpets to thank the donors, uh, but really it should be the donors to thank the students. Because if you're lucky enough to save up enough money that you can give back, you're always looking for some good opportunity, some organization you really feel good about. And I certainly think Eastern is, and certainly you students are. And so I want to thank you for being there and, and <laughs> allowing me to do that. So thank you. Thank you, Brad. Wonderful sharing there. Our next student speaker is Quentin Durfee, the recipient of the Joy Veach Dobbin and William J. Dobbin Scholarship and the Maybell Clark McDonald Scholarship. Quentin? Hey, everyone. Um, so, firstly, I would like to thank all of you guys for being here, and I would like to thank all your support I've, you've given me to, to right off the bat. I, I know many people from the foundation. I know Regina because her German's impeccable and I sing German occasionally. Uh, I won't give any examples. Um, <laughs> and I've known uh, Mr. Insko and his wife since high school. And many of you are my classmates and I am able to receive support not only from, from all of you who donate to us, I'm also able to receive support from all the students here, so I'd like to thank all of you. Um, it's kind of interesting that they let me speak here since I'm only a sophomore, but I guess I have financial need as well. Um, I find myself ever so blessed to be able to participate in this gathering, Tea and Trumpets, for the second year in a row. Um, now, before I, before I get to me, I, I guess you're kind of wondering a little bit about myself, so I'll, I guess I can give you a a bio. Um, so I graduated from LeGrand High School in 2015, and 
Since then, um, I've been in the Oregon Army National Guard as a medic for the past four years this June. I have pole vaulted for seven years, including college, and have been singing my heart out since I was a boy. And speaking of my childhood, I was raised by two wonderful parents, Kevin and Cassie Durfee. My dad worked two jobs, one as the Army Band Commander for the Idaho Army, for the Idaho Army National Guard, and then he also worked as a choir teacher. Well, he still does both. Uh, he's been in for 16 years now for the, for the military, so I'm, I'm hoping to beat him, you know. I'm also hoping to outrank him so he can salute me, um, but that, <laughs> <laughs> that's a little different. Um, you know, uh, but he's a CW4. If you know anything about rank, uh, he's still going to look down on me, even though he's shorter than me, too, which is hard to imagine, right? Um, however, my mom had the more difficult job of the two. Uh, she raised eight, she's raising eight children, so, and we all have to be respectable people, and in this society, that's something that's kind of hard to do, eh, at least in my opinion, um, and so, but since I was young, I was always taught that I was going to have to put myself through school. Um, with all my siblings, uh, me being number three in the lineup, I knew that I was not receiving much funding, if any, from my parents. My dad confirmed uh, this hypothesis when we talked about college during my sophomore year. He took me into his office and was like, so, you wanna go to college? I'm just like, yeah, I'd love to go to college. I like learning. He goes, well, I'm not paying for it. Oh, okay, he's just like, yeah, do you see the lineup? And I'm just like, yeah, <laughs> fair point. Uh, and so, and to be honest, you know, I, I was just applying for scholarships, as many as I could. Um, I applied to over eight, 10 colleges when I was a senior in high school. And, and you know, I, I didn't really think much of going to EOU at the time. Um, you know, I thought I wanted to go out and explore the world. Um, however, once I began to look at EOU, I was surprised to see how much opportunity it showed. Um, I originally wanted to go to a private school because I wanted that one-on-one -on -one teacher time, you know? And now that I go here, I realize how much of that I am graced with. I know my professors, and they know me. For example, um, Dr. Ron Kelly, who teaches OCHEM, gave his cell phone number to our whole class in case we had any questions. I have lots of questions. <laughs> so, um, and so I have abused it <laughs> probably more than anyone in the class. And so often when we talk in class, um, he says, if you guys need my phone number, you can talk to Quentin. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I do have to say, I did get an A in OCHEM, and it's probably because I, I, I mean, I haven't put Ron on speed dial yet, but I've thought about it. Uh, <laughs> I'm also able to be so much more involved here on campus. Uh, this year, I have researched with Dr. Colin Andrew on heme proteins and hydroxylamine reactivity. And if you have any questions about that, I am learning about it, so I can't answer them thoroughly, but I'm working on it. So um, I'm also president of the Chem Club, which is a nationally recognized club. Um, and we're going to New Orleans this year to present research with uh, 21 students. Um, I'm treasurer for a pre-professional health club, which uh, the president is right there, Peter Kane. He's awesome. Get to know him. And I am part of the track team as a pole vaulter. At this moment, I'm redshirting, but I can't wait to be back later on because there's nothing like flying through the air and not hurting yourself, you know. I don't, I don't, <laughs> um, and recently, I put in an application to become a student trustee the opportunities that I have been able to take advantage of just keep coming, and I cannot express my gratitude enough. With everything that I do, it would not be possible without two things, one of which being my fiance, Elizabeth McDonald. Lizzie has been my number one fan since I've had the pleasure of meeting her, and she motivates me to be better than I ever thought I could. She's been there on the days where I forget to take time for me, but somehow manages to keep me oriented with the goals at the same time. I look forward to the day when I get to call her Mrs. Durfee at the end of this term, and I, it's a very happy moment for me. Lastly, I would like to thank the foundation for all the assistance that you have provided me. Because of your generosity, I'm able to focus on making myself as stellar as possible and grasp the bull by the horns and go to work. If it were not for your generous investment in my life, I would not be able to do all that I do. So I would like to thank you. I look forward to investing in other people's lives as you have invested in mine, and later on, maybe becoming part of the foundation. 
Thank you for your time and energy. Thank you, Quentin. Forget about following the president. I don't want to follow our students anymore. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Well, that's a great story. Now it is my pleasure to introduce Michaela Mangione, the recipient of the Maybell Clark McDonald Scholarship, the Joy of Each Dobbin Scholarship, the Sapphire Scholarship, and the Joy of Each Dobbin and William J. Dobbin Scholarship. Michaela. with Eleanor here. This is not the same as a classroom speech. <laughs> um, my name is Michaela Vangioni, and I'm currently finishing my capstone project to graduate this term with my English writing degree. Um, over the past two years, I have had the amazing opportunity to work with some of the best people on campus as a resident assistant. I am part of a staff that has encouraged and mentored me immensely so that I can continue to have the pleasure of serving my community on campus. Through this position, I have gotten to know students from all kinds of backgrounds and skill sets. I have watched them succeed in things like athletics and academics, and I have walked with them through challenges like homesickness and trauma. One of my favorite stories as an RA was when I was living on campus in North um, and two of my residents, they came to me with a serious roommate conflict. It was a group of five girls who had been the best of friends until they got <coughs> into a big fight. It had gotten to the point where at least two of them were seriously considering moving out um, because they feared that their friends resented them so much. After the two girls talked to me, I had a conversation with the other three, and we set up a time to talk as a big group and I asked another RA to sit in uh, during the mediation with me. During our visit, I asked each of the girls to tell their sides of the story without interruption. And as they told me what had happened and how it had affected them, the other RA and myself were able to use our training we've received in order to validate their experiences and create an environment of mutual understanding and respect between them. After over two hours of talking, it became evident to me that some of the girls had received inaccurate information, <laughs> which had influenced their relationships within the group. Once the confusion settled, the girls were able to resolve their conflict and um, restore their friendship. Um, this was one situation where I was able to help people by recognizing and validating what they were experiencing and giving them a safe place to discuss their differences. Coming from a broken home, I know what it feels like to have somebody rooting for me. I was 12 when my mom remarried, and it turned out to be a really challenging situation at home. During that time, I became more involved in my youth group and church, and even though many of my friends didn't know what was going on at home, I felt a sense of connection there that grounded me. And it was then that I came to have a real relationship with God, and I started to learn more about my identity in him, despite the challenges I was facing at home. My stepdad brought a lot of good into my life. He taught me to ride a horse and shoot a compound bow and back a truck up with a trailer, which is actually a little bit more difficult than you might think. <laughs> he also brought a lot of hardship because he had a mental illness. And as that progressively got worse, his demeanor changed, and my mom was forced to get a restraining order to keep the rest of our family safe. This was one of the scariest moments in my life, but through it all, I felt a sense of peace because of my relationship with God and my church family. Coming to Eastern seemed to be, at first, a matter of convenience. I was blessed with scholarship money that nearly covered my tuition for the three years I've been here. I know now that God had a plan for me all along, and he allowed me to use my experiences, however challenging, to understand what some of my residents were going through and help them. Because of the trials I've endured and the ones yet to come, I know I'll be better equipped as a teacher, but I would not have had the opportunity to go to college at all had it not been from the tremendous support I received from amazing people like you guys here today. Um, I kind of want to do this experiment, so bear with me. Um, if you're a scholarship donor, could you raise your hand? Thank you. <laughs> Um, of you folks who just raised your hand, would you raise them again and keep them raised for a second if some point in your life you also received scholarship support? Thank you. 
Um, to you folks especially, I want to say thank you for passing along a huge blessing for myself and others to follow your example. For the rest of you, like me, who have received scholarship funds this year, I'd like to take the time to encourage you to also pass it along. Perhaps one day you find yourself a little better off than some and decide to donate to the scholarship foundation. And while that would be awesome, um, I also want you to know that you don't have to wait until then to help somebody in need. Every one of you right now is sitting next to somebody who needs to feel valued. I pray that everyone here would take the time to notice the people in your classes and jobs and community that need to feel appreciated and encouraged and that we would all be willing to give a hug or lend an ear when the opportunity arises. I want to thank Danny Bailey, the scholarship coordinator, um, and all of the people in the financial aid office for working so hard to connect students with scholarship funds. We couldn't do this without you. Um, thank you also to the scholarship donors, especially, for giving me the opportunity to share some of my story. And it's my hope that it encourages you all to push through difficulties and take the time to help someone when they are pushing through theirs, too. So thank you. Wow, what an impressive group of students. I mean, it's just, uh, we're nearing the end of our program, but I don't want everybody to just get up and leave. Take time to really get to spend some time with these students while you have them here. Uh, they are really an impressive group. Um, you are all welcome to take home a tea and trumpets gift bag that's on the table there. Uh, and as we conclude, we hope these simple offerings will remind you of our gratitude for your contributions and provide you with a way to remember the impact that you have made in the lives of our students. In addition, an EOU Foundation brochure is provided to give you information about how to continue your support to EOU as well as opportunities to become more involved. As many of you know, this weekend the EOU Music Department presents Life is a Highway featuring our, your favorite On the Move songs by the EOU Chamber Choir. I had the chance to hear the Chamber Choir when I was actually visiting here in, de in December and I leaned over and I told someone, whenever they're performing, I will never miss another one of their performances. They are that good. So if you haven't got a chance to see them, please do. Uh, there are shows on Friday evening at 7.30, followed by two shows on Saturday at 4 and 8 o'clock in McKenzie Theater. I'll be at the 4 o'clock, just so you know. Tickets go on sale at the door one hour prior to the concert. Uh, I do want to thank Sodexo for providing the food for our tea and trumpets today. People were wondering, what is the trumpet part? And I, there is a history to it, and I wish I had learned the full history before coming up here and starting this sentence. <laughs> but, <laughs> but there were trumpets involved at one point in the, in the past. I don't play it. Maybe we'll bring it back in the future at some point, but it's, so it's not too obtrusive. But anyway, thank you again for coming and for your continued support. Please feel free to stick around and enjoy more of the goodies at the table and more tea and coffee. And uh, have a wonderful evening, and go Mountaineers. Thank you. <laughs>